Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we have a few new things that I cannot wait to share with you. So I picked up uh, some of the new Lancome collection. This is the Lancome and the Louvre, and there's a palette and three lipsticks. So I picked up one of the three lipsticks. You can see the packaging for this is stunning. Unfortunately, my bullet is broken. Uh, it arrived that way, but uh, you know, it's intact enough to share with you everything. So let's take a look. You can see that we've got this beautiful, you know, the Lancome rose at the top and you push that down and this pops open. So let me do that one more time. And let me just show you mine. So my tip is broken. It's a little wobbly in the tube. So I'm guessing it got messed up during uh, transport, but I wanted to share this embossing with you. So that's really beautiful. So this one here is shade 200. Uh, this one is called Drama, French Drama. So I picked up those things. I'm also going to share with you the new Suku foundation. And I received this in PR. I've been testing it for a couple of weeks and it is really beautiful. So we're going to take a look at that. We also have the new blue YSL lash clash. So we're going to take a look at this as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the Suku foundation. So I just wanna show you the packaging of this. You can see this is not flat, it is a curved top. And we have kind of this, you know, curvature along the lid as well. We have frosted glass down here. And there are some new shades. So I picked one of the new shades here. This is shade 205. It is now the lightest cooler tone shade. We have 30 grams of product in here. So that is standard foundation size. I know because of this packaging, it looks like it might be a little bit smaller, but it is still your 30 gram packaging. We have a one year shelf life and it's made in Japan like all other Suku products. And it comes in, you know, your traditional box, but it does come with a little spatula, which is somewhere here. Okay, here's a spatula. I knew I had it somewhere. So you can see we do have an offset spatula to, uh, you know, take out some of the foundation. So let's go ahead and take a look at some demos while we talk about the details of this. This information is coming directly from Suku. You can always find information on their new products on the actual Suku website. You can't purchase through there, but they do have information and shades and so forth. Now, according to Suku, the, they have two new complexion products continuing the brand's history of luxurious base makeup that has earned a cult following. Inspired by the elegant ritual of conditioning the skin to be at its very best, Suku's new foundation and loose powder were made to go beyond the beauty of bare skin while prioritizing skin health. So the foundation is called the foundation. The loose powder is called the loose powder. I received the foundation in PR and I have pre-ordered the loose powder and, you know, that will be coupled with my anniversary order uh, for, you know, from Selfridges. I'll leave that information linked down below, well, not linked, but it, down below in the description box if you would like to pre-order from the Selfridges counter for Suku, uh, the Selfridges store for the Suku counter, you can email them suku.london at eqpuk.com. So I'll have that down below in the description box. And pre-orders are open for this as well as the anniversary collection. And on my community tab, I have all of the details with pricing and everything there as well. So according to Suku, the rich cream foundation balances a perfect level of coverage, leaving the skin with a long lasting and radiant finish over time. Together with the newly created feather-like finishing powder, this complexion duo creates a beautiful and polished skin-like look. The foundation and loose powder are launching on September 7th at Selfridges online, at Selfridges as well, Harrods and Liberty. So in-store and online in all three of those locations and it is retailing for 75 pounds. And there is a little SPF in this foundation. Depending on the shade, there is SPF 25 or SPF 30. Just a few notes about this foundation from Suku. It says more dense texture and smoothness for a refined glow. It's containing luxurious oils. The texture is rich, but never cakey and glides effortlessly onto the skin, leaving it silky and smooth. Formulate it to provide the unique feeling and smoothness of a cream that lasts all day long. It has enhanced coverage and skin adherence whilst keeping makeup feeling comfortable for hours. It's carefully formulated with powders and a well-balanced blend of fine-grained clay minerals 
The new foundation results in a refined makeup look with a radiant finish that lasts hours without smudging and sacrificing richness. It also transforms into glow over time. So it says it blends with your skin's natural oils. The foundation transforms over time to elevate your makeup look, providing a beautiful, long-lasting finish with a lovely glow and luster. It's a luxuriousness that envelops the skin. There are 13 beauty ingredients exclusively sourced in Japan to maintain the skin's hydration levels. And they have 24 shades now. So the brand new shade 205 is gonna be your lightest of the pink beige ochre shades. And, you know, I think it was definitely a welcome addition to this color range. I'll show you the swatches of the other Suku foundations and colors that I have. And they also sent me a sample of the shade that I typically get. So I will share those with you in just a minute. But let's talk a little bit about my thoughts on this product. Now, as you've been looking at the demos and wear tests, I have been wearing this foundation you know, for a couple of weeks, people are always asking me what, what foundation I have on right now. It really does give you this really beautiful luminous glow. But when we think of a glowy foundation, I feel like, at least for me, a lot of times I think of something glowy and dewy. Like dewy seems to always go hand in hand with glowy. And that is not really the case with this. We really do have a more natural skin-like finish. You know, it's slightly matte, but not like a drying matte with a glowy radiance to it. So it's actually not dewy on the skin. I actually find compared to the original, the cream foundation, I find this one to be a little bit drier than the cream foundation. So a little bit drier than the previous formulation. And what I mean by that is just your appearance of the texture on the skin. I feel like the cream foundation gave you this really beautiful, luminous, but slightly dewy appearance, whereas this is gonna be a little bit more matte on the skin. And it's comfortable, it's hydrating, it looks great. You can see how it performs over time with the wear test. Now I have used it with a few different primers, and you know, if you would like to have a little bit more of a dewier glow, definitely go with a moisturizing primer, which is actually what I'm wearing today. So I'm using the Euphoria primer, which feels more like a moisturizer and it's going to kind of give you a little bit more dewiness to your skin. So if that is something that you're looking for, you know, just switching up your primer can really do that. If you would like a more matte look, then take a look at something like the Surat Perfectionist Primer. And I feel like if you just kind of change those up, you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a different appearance with the foundation as well. Now, one of the great things about Suku's products is they don't have any added fragrances. So if you're, you've are you been looking for a really nice fragrance-free foundation, I would definitely consider the Suku one. I think this is a really great foundation. You get natural looking but perfected skin. It's very weightless, it's comfortable. I do think, you know, wear time I think is pretty good on this. I wouldn't say that it is the best wear time. I have worn some foundations that seem to, uh, you know, last a little bit more perfectly on the skin once you get to the 12 to 15 hour mark. But I think it really does a great job performing over the time over the time of the day. But the biggest thing I'd like to point out about the wear test and how it performs over the day is actually what happens when your skin's natural oils come out. Our weather has been up and down here, so some days it's been a little bit cooler, more fall-like, and other days we're still like approaching 100 and it's very humid. And this foundation has remained the same throughout those days. You know, like there, there's no difference depending on the weather here. The performance of it, you know, you're getting this beautiful luminous glow to your skin, but at no point, even when I get like oily and sweaty, are those natural oils making me look greasy at all? So you can actually see with the two wear tests, uh, and I am showing them again here, but you can see like the first wear test, that was on a very hot and humid day. And you know, that's how it performed after being outside in the heat, sweating and so forth throughout the day. And the second wear test, it was a little bit cooler. It was like 80 degrees, you know, a nice breeze, not too humid. And that's how it performed. So you can see that, you know, regardless of the temperature or your, your own sweating, <laughs> um, it really holds up and stays true to the foundation's claims. So I think it's a really great foundation. Let's take a look at some swatches. 
So I think the packaging on here is really beautiful. You know, it is a cream foundation, so the delivery system is typically going to be easiest with a jar. And it's nice that they give you a spatula. So it does come with one of those little plastic lids. This will help keep it fresh. If you are going to keep this on here, which I am doing, you do wanna make sure that you put down this lever before putting on the jar or it's, it's not gonna go on. So let's take a look at some swatches so we can see the new 205 with a couple of the original shades. All right, so we're gonna start off with the shade 205. And I do not have the original, the cream foundation anymore. I did actually go through my jar of that. So that is one that I kind of used up. But here is the 205. I'm gonna swatch this twice just so that we can do a few comparisons because here I'm gonna go ahead and swatch some additional Suku shades, but I also wanna compare it to some of my most used shades so you can see how this compares to some other brands. So that is the new The Foundation in 205. And they've also sent me a little sample of the shade 105, which is what it is. This is another recent shade. This one came out last year. So I have this in the liquid foundation. I'll show you how the liquid versus the cream compare. And you can see that this one here is gonna be a little bit warmer in tone than the 205. The 205 does have a little bit more rosiness, but it also has a bit more of an ivory hue to it as well. Now, this is the Suku, the liquid foundation, and this is in shade 105. I have already shaken this, but you know this is a favorite foundation of mine. I'm like halfway through with this bottle now. And you know I feel like that really says something because I have quite a few foundations. So this is the liquid, and you can see that the cream foundation, they're gonna match up pretty, pretty accurately. The new, the cream is ever so slightly peachier, but again, it's also a lot newer of a product. So that might factor in as well. I would say if you know what shade you are in the liquid foundation, stick with the same shade. Now these new 205 and 105 shades are relatively recent. Prior to that, I was wearing shade two. This one is um, 210 and 220 and kind of going back and forth between them, but they were both a little bit too dark and you know, just not quite right. So this is the powder foundation in shade 210. And this is gonna be our deeper, cooler tone one. So I absolutely love this foundation. It's a little bit deep, but I, you know, it. they don't have the lighter options in this one. I do hope that they consider making those because this powder foundation, I don't even have the case for it, but this is incredible because you can use this dry or wet. So it's very, very versatile. You can essentially make your own, like um, almost like a cream foundation, you know, like a cream to powder type product here as well. So it looks beautiful wet or dry and it melts into your skin. Like literally, it does not look like a powder foundation. So it's by far, hands down, my favorite powder foundation. And I just wanted to show you how those will compare. So this is going to be the new 205, 105. This is 105 in the liquid, and this is 210 in the glow powder. Now recently I have tried quite a few of these like really nice cream foundations. We've got the Chanel, we've got the Clay de Pau. So let's take a little look at that. So this one here is going to be the Chanel. You can see it is pretty large. And this is in shade 01 beige. And I wanted to go ahead, we'll put this one right here so you can see how that compares. This one is going to have more of this like lighter ivory hue as well, but you can see that compared to the Suku, it's a little bit more golden. Then we have the Clay de Poe, the foundation. And this one here is in my normal shade for Clay de Poe. This is I-10. So let's go ahead and we'll put that one right here. And you can see, again, this is kind of in between the Chanel and the Suku. The Suku's still gonna be a little bit rosier. The Chanel is slightly more golden. And the Clay de Pau is a little bit more of a, a neutral ivory. So let's take a look at just a few more foundations. This is the Kogundo Aqua in 012. And we're gonna put this one up here. And this is my go-to shade in Kogundo. It is a little bit deeper, 
slightly rosier, but it's pretty close. So if you wear shade 012, I'd recommend the new 205 in the Suku. Let's also take a look at the new Prada foundation. And this one's actually a little bit too deep for me. This is shade 110. And I think I should have gotten the lighter shade 105. You can see it's deeper and peachier, but it's a really nice foundation. So this one's a Suku all the way over here. You can see how much deeper the Prada is. And just one more comparison here. This is 110 in the Ritual Defeat. I'm gonna put this one right next to the Suku here. And again, this is gonna be a little bit more, it's a little warmer. It's a little bit more um, of a golden peach hue and slightly deeper. But, you know, still a good match. I love the Ritual Defeat foundation as well. It's definitely one I've been reaching for a lot. Now, the other Clay de Pot foundations and the other formulas for shade I-10, which is what I wear, it does match th this one here. And the Chanel is your equivalent to BD-01. So let me just take a look at a BR-12 because I also have that one. So this is the Chanel Sublimage Lessons de Temps in br12 so this is going to be deeper it's rosier okay and so if we're looking this one here is the suku the second one versus the chanel br12 okay and then we have the chanel uh, in what's bd01 or beige 01 in the foundation here So I hope that was helpful. I have to say the new Suku foundation I think is really beautiful. Suku really is, you know, known for their base products. They do an excellent job and this is like no exception. So I really, really love this. I think it's definitely worth looking into. It's a great foundation. You know, you can use it for you know, use it more sparingly. If you want a lighter finish, you can build it up a little bit more, but I would say that you know, this is really a true medium coverage foundation. And again, you get a more natural skin-like glow with this, you know, like a radiant lip from within, but without any sort of pearly effect to the skin or without excess dew that, you know, sometimes depending on your skin, skin, uh, you know, the oiliness level and so forth, could sometimes those dewy foundations end up looking a little greasy this i think you know it really stays put it looks great let's go ahead and move on to the lancome collection so the lancome collection the palette comes in this nice decorative box here it does come with a pamphlet i'll show you but i wanted to show you the foam protection here so it's very well secured in its box this would make a really nice gift for somebody as well, just because it is very nicely packaged. Now the paper inside, we have kind of like a little poster of, you know, one of the statues and then over here, a bust. <laughs> and then we have, you know, some information here. There's like a map of the Louvre and so forth. And in this case, we're looking at the Richelieu wing and that's what this palette is for. So and that's the bust. So here's the actual palette. You can see we have this really beautiful cover. Uh, you know, it, it's showing you your marble bust here and everything. I think it's marble in, in real life. But the colors really go very well with sculptures. And so this is the Richelieu, Richelieu Wing palette. I hope I pronounced that correctly. We have an 18 month shelf life. It is made in Italy and we have 15 grams of product here. So what we have is a five gram highlighter and four two and a half gram shadows. We do have a full size mirror here. It does come with a couple applicators. Those are right here. So we have a dual ended. Um, this one has a foam tip applicator and an angled brush. And the other one is two foam tip applicators. So you can see we have two of the same and then this one's gonna be more pointy. So we have those and then look at the palette. So we have this marble effect here. You can see this shade is actually a marbled shade here. The color palette aside from the green, those are really all the hues and tones that you see in like marble statues. You got some of those peachy, rosy, golden, highlighty tones. And then we have the green and that is gonna be your showstopper shade. Let's swatch these. 
So this highlighter here, you know, it's really beautiful. You can use this on the eyes as well. And I will show you a demo. Now with the eye swatches, I actually ended up, you know, deciding to pair the shades, you know, with the ones that I thought looked kind of the closest, just so you could see how different they are on the eyes. So we'll look at those in just a second. But these are going to be, this is that marbly shade here. You can see it's really more of a gold. And then we have this rosy shade. But look at this color palette, you know, it definitely shows you the tones of the marble. The green actually makes me think more of, you know, oxidized copper and so forth. It is a gorgeous green shadow. I really, I wanna bring your attention to this because so many brands have been trying to do a green shadow and they either have such a really deep black base or gray base to it that when you blend it, it kind of blends out the green or they're very light. And this is a really versatile shade. And we do have shimmer. These shades are all going to have some shimmer to them. The highlighter you can see is gonna be different. It's more of a metallic finish, but the actual eyeshadow shades all have some sparkle. So let me show you the lipstick before we move on to the eye swatches. But I love the packaging here. Again, we've got that marble look. It's not obviously not real marble, but it is gonna be plastic. We have our Lancome Rose here. Press this, the bottom will come out and you pull that. And these are the Lapsalu Rouge, which is a really nice formula. So we have this really beautiful embossing on here. Again, my tip is broken. It feels, mine feels slightly wobbly in the tube probably because of that issue. But um, yeah, so it's a very soft uh, in texture product. So, you know, you can see how thick this swatch is because it is a really soft cream formula here. So. This one here is shade 200, French Touch. And on my lips right now, I have this applied in a light layer with a brush. And I just wanted to show you before we move on the lip liner that I think pairs really nicely with it. This is Givenchy number nine, Mocha uh, Renversant. And look at that, you can see how close those are. It's a really great match. So if you have this lip liner and you're curious about this shade of lipstick, the Lancome lipstick has a touch more clay to it, whereas this is slightly rosier, but they're almost exactly the same color. So let's take a look at the uh, demos and details for the palette and the lipstick. And you know, I think it is a really beautiful palette. Now, as I mentioned with the eye demos, I am kind of pairing up shades I thought kind of went together. So I paired up the highlighter with that middle marbly gold shade. And then I paired up the peach and the rose shade. And then the green, I wanted to show you that with a brush, so you get a lighter application versus building it up with your finger. You could also use that wet, but you know, I think it is it's beautiful. I think all of these shades are beautiful. I think it's a really great palette. If you didn't have that green, I think the palette would be lacking because you know you do have kind of very similar tones with the peaches and the roses and the gold and champagne and so forth. You know, they, they're all fairly similar. They have some differences, but if the palette didn't have that green or some other like pop shade, you know, I think it wouldn't be quite as interesting. I think this green really makes the palette and that's, you know, that's kind of, that's why I bought it. So uh, one thing I wanted to note though, this palette, by the way, does have magnetic closure. So um, just something to note about that. Now, as I mentioned, you know, when we were looking at green eyeshadows, a lot of them have a very dark gray or black base. Now this does have a little bit of a gray base to it. And when you really pile it up, you can almost see a bit of charcoal mixed with green, but that's actually when it's built up, not when you're brushing it out. When you brush it out, you see more of this emerald green glitter and you know more of a, a green base. It's really more th that charcoal green vibe that you get when you build it up. Is It's actually more almost like a duochrome because when the light hits it a certain way, you see a bit more of like this gray with almost like a green and purple hue to it. And then, uh, you know, when the when you turn it, then it's like 
totally like emerald green. Think like, you know, a little bit deeper than the Emerald City and Wizard of Oz, but you know, we're looking true emerald here. So it's really beautiful, but that's what I wanted to know is there is some dimension to that green eyeshadow. And even though you can sort of see some gray at some times, it's really more of a duochrome effect and not a base color for this green. And I think that's what makes this one in particular very special. One of the things I wanna know about all the eyeshadows here is that they don't really have any obvious base shades when you blend them out. Uh, you know, you can blend these out very sheerly, you can build them up a bit more. I think they're really beautiful and they pair beautifully with the green as well as the highlight. So let's take a look at the lipstick here as well. And when we're looking at the lipstick, I wanted to show the lip demo with it applied from the bullet. You can see it goes on very thickly. If my bullet were fully intact, I'm not sure if it would go on quite as thickly as that, but it's a very, very soft cream formula. So it most likely would. And you can see you really get rich pigmented color with one swipe. So if you want it a little bit softer, you definitely want to blot, use a lip brush or a finger to apply it. And this particular shade, when you use a lighter layer of this, you're really getting a bit more of a clay vibe to it. You know, think of some of those like earthy clay pigments that used to be used in, you know, ancient like sculptures and pots and things like that. And that's what this tone reminds me of. You know, it's not really a terracotta, but it does have a bit of that earthenware kind of vibe to it. So I think overall the collection really, you know, it, it just, it, totally radiates the essence of the Louvre and the colors that you would see, particularly, you know, with this bust that they are using for the model here. And, you know, I just think they did a, a fantastic job. So, and I, Lisa Eldridge is, I believe the creative director still at Lancome. I would have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure, you know, she was in charge of this collection. I know she has promoted it on her Instagram page as well. So I think she did a great job with this. You know, the colors are fantastic. And I think the formulas for the eyeshadow palette and everything, they are really nice, you know? So you've got your traditional kind of metallics and they're like satin shimmery shades. So as we're looking at the demos here, before we move on to comparison swatches, I just wanna mention this YSL blue mascara and you can see the demo of that here. So I love color mascaras. I couldn't resist this bright blue. I have to say the blue mascara really makes me think a lot of the Pat McGrath one, which unfortunately I did already finish with that one, but it's your bright electric blue. It's gorgeous. The YSL Lash Clash formula, I think is a really nice formula. You know, it's kind of, it's volumizing, but you've got a little bit of lengthening here too. So it's kind of, you know, an all-in-one type formula. I have never experienced any sort of, you know, um, flaking or any sort of mess with the mascara, no smudging. So for me, it's always held up really well. And it also comes in black and brown. I love the brown one as well. Overall, I think it's a very solid formula. I love seeing this blue color. So let's swatch that and then we'll move on to some comparisons for the uh, eyeshadow palette. So here's the blue. You can see we've got this nice fluffy wand here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right here and you can see we definitely have this bright electric blue. Now compared to the Pat McGrath, I think this might be a slightly more electric. Like see how when it's built up, it's a little bit deeper, a little more cobalt. The Pat McGrath seemed more like that whereas this look has a little bit more neon blue vibe to it. Uh, but I think they're very, very close. And I just wanted to swatch, this is Electric Blueberry from um, Victoria Beckham with it because I, I just kind of really wanted to see those together. So you can see this is slightly more um, cerulean, I would say, but very, you know, they're close. So let's take a look at some comparisons for the uh, eyeshadows. So I first wanted to take a look at the Dior Mono in Lucky Clover. 
This is a really beautiful green, but if you really want this to be a truly like more emerald shade and look more like this, you know, if you, this is one that you, when you brush it out with a brush, you can really see a bit more of the base. It can really kind of not look as green. So if you want it to look really green, you wanna use your finger or foam tip applicator or apply it wet. This shadow in particular is best wet um, if you really want that impact. Similarly, we have this one from Chantecaille. This was limited edition, but it is the Tiger Luminescent Eye Shade. Again, a really beautiful shade. This one is gonna be a nice emerald glitter. You can see we've got a little bit of that gray base there as well. You get a little bit of that reflection in there. It kind of looks similar to this. However, if you really want this one to have impact, you definitely need to use this one wet as well. You can see it's a little bit more sheer than that in the Lancome. The color is very similar, but we do have a slight bit more forest green hue, um, more of like a, a little bit of a deeper emerald here in the Lancome versus the Chantecaille. So the Chantecaille is gonna be a bit more sheer. And again, that's one that if you really want that impact, using it wet um, is really going to make a big difference with the Chantecaille. And then this is the Vizier Peridot palette. So I just wanted to compare this green as well. This isn't gonna be as shimmery. It's a little bit more of a metallic finish, but this one is fairly close to the Lancome. And again, we've got this, these beautiful light peachy tones in the rest of the palette. Now, this is the Bobbi Brown highlighter in Quartz Glow. I wanted to see how this compared to the highlighter here in the Lancome. You can see Quartz Glow is gonna be more yellow. Okay, so we definitely have more of a peachy champagne in this highlighter shade here. Let's actually take a look at these Tom Ford highlighters. This one here is Mood Light. I wanted to compare this gold tone with the golden hue here. Uh, you can see we've got more of that yellow antique gold in the Tom Ford. Let's just go ahead and do the white gold here just for completion's sake, but that's not gonna go with anything in this palette. And then we've got Mood Light. Let's take a look at this shade here, this rosier shade down here with the peach. Those are fairly close. I feel like those are really, really a good match. So if you have a uh, mood light, the deeper shade there is very much like the rose shade. And then this one here is peach light. So let's take a look at peach light here. And yeah, our peach light, that's gonna be close, but this is slightly peachier. We've got a little bit more copper in the um, Lancome, and that's the lighter shade there. So, yeah, I don't say any of them quite um, match the highlighter per se, but oh, I would say that the Tom Ford highlighters really are a great match for the other eyeshadows in this particular palette. And then let's just take a look at Hermes Rose Atacama. Just put that right there. Nope, that's too light. Now, I just wanna do a quick comparison though of um, this lipstick here in French Drama. So let's take a look at my Lisa Eldridge Velvet and let's take a look actually at Cinnabar. So I feel like Cinnabar is my closest, oh, it actually has more red. So you can see Cinnabar is gonna be more red. Let's take a look, let's see. Let's take a look at Affair here. All right, Affair is a little bit closer. Let me do a better swatch of that. Put that right there. You can see Affair is gonna be a bit more nude. Uh, so it's slightly warmer, it's gonna be lighter, but it does have a very similar hue to it. So I would say they're kind of close. If you mix Cinnabar and Affair, that's pretty much the color of French Drama. And then the last shade I want to take a look at is one of the Armani Lip Powers in shade 203. And let's just see how this one compares. You can see obviously this is shinier. It's not going to, this is the satin, not the matte formula, but I do think that that is a really close shade match as well to French Drama. So this one is a little bit lighter. And I think, you know, it's slightly, has a little bit more peach in it than French drama, but uh, French drama has a little bit more of a tea vibe to it. But overall, I think they're a pretty close comparison, very close match there. So 
Uh, that sums up everything for today. I have to say the Lancome Louvre collection. I am really excited by this. I think the palette's gorgeous. I think is a great collector's item. Um, not that I, I'm going to keep it like pristine or anything. I'm using mine, but uh, I think it's gorgeous. The lipstick shades, you know, I think the packaging is great. The four shades, you know, I understand why they went with this color palette for the lipsticks, but I would love to have, you know, a very light, soft shade in this particular packaging. So, you know, maybe in the future if they have another collection, but all of the shades are kind of, you know, your deeper shades kind of in this type of color palette with some reds and so forth as well. So there are, I believe, four different shades. Palette's great, lipstick formula is nice, it's creamy, it's matte, it's comfortable. And uh, yeah, it reminds me a little bit of the Givenchy Deep Velvets, if you're familiar with that formula. As for the YSL Lash Clash in blue, love it. <laughs> I mean, what's there to say? I think it's a great formula and I love blue mascaras. So it's definitely fun. And you could see in the demo, you know, what it looks like on bare lashes versus, you know, on top of, you know, black mascara. So I think it's just a, a great fun way to kind of change things up a little bit. And as for the Suku foundation, I mean, it's glorious. What else can I say? It's a fantastic foundation. So definitely worth looking into. And again, I'll have all of that information in a community tab, a post on the community tab. So I'll try and leave that linked down below in the description box. And Thank you so much. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what your thoughts are on these products, if you've tried any of them yet, and what interests you. So have a great day. I'll see you very soon.